some of these dramatic gyrations we've seen in cryptocurrencies, whether it is Bitcoin or Ether or some of the other coins that I know you yourself watch so closely. And we had William Quigley, the co-founder of Wax and Tether on yesterday, and he suggested that maybe the influx of professional traders and some of the Wall Street folks has actually meant that Bitcoin, for example, is increasingly held as a risk type asset, similar to, for example, a growth stock, and that when you see risk off, you see risk off within cryptocurrencies as, as well, and that's contributing to some of the moves we've seen as late. How, how do you see it? Yeah, I, I think that that's definitely a factor. Um, I think that, you know, if you look at the way that Bitcoin trades, if you look at the way that cryptocurrencies in general trade, it is still primarily in sympathy with risk assets. And we're certainly seeing that over the course of this week, you know, as equities have been down, Bitcoin has followed and the rest of the cryptocurrency market has. As equities have bounced today, Bitcoin is also showing signs of strength. But there's also another... Uh, angle through which the market looks at Bitcoin, and that's as an inflation hedge. Uh, given that Bitcoin has a fixed supply, um, you know that's always been a part of the dynamic and a part of the investment thesis. Whether you're talking about Wall Street professionals or you're talking about retail traders or kind of the core of the Bitcoin market that has been in it over the longer term, over the last ten years that it's been around as an asset, it also has that dynamic as an inflation hedge. And so it's not as simple as being able to just say, oh, this is this is a risk asset and it's going to trade in sympathy with equities. Uh, there's also that dynamic to it as well that puts it more akin in a way to something like gold. Yeah, although we haven't necessarily seen it trade more similarly to gold. I mean, last week was kind of case in point on that. That being said, I mean, you argue the fundamentals have not changed for cryptocurrencies. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that that's an example of one of the fundamentals that hasn't changed, even as we see the market kind of, as you put it, uh, gyrating around here and, and figuring out just where sort of Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies sit within the market and within the risk spectrum and, and all of that. But again, you know, if you look at how uh, how the market has traded over the last week, a lot of that has been driven by actually very micro factors. This crash that you're alluding to it happened over the weekend uh, in very thin markets. Um, you know, that was uh, driven by, again, a lot of technical factors of liquidations, leverage in the market and so forth. The fundamentals, though, have not changed. All of the usage that we've seen pick up in cryptocurrencies in Web3 products over the last six months, those metrics are continuing to move up into the right. Um, and if you look at, you know, again, the, the fundamentals of the technology, there are still great breakthroughs being made on that front, uh, progress marches on, even despite uh, the wild price action. And if you look at the capital that is inflowing into the space, you know, just in the last few months alone, we've seen multiple multi-billion dollar funds uh, being dedicated to the asset class. And that's very meaningful when you're talking about an asset that, you know, is worth on the order of a trillion dollars. Uh, that's suddenly a meaningful percentage there. And I think that we'll continue to see those trends. And so you have to separate out sort of the, the micro and the short term of what's happening from yeah. the longer term. So does that mean that the chief risk for cryptocurrency assets right now is still regulation and all the question marks there? Yeah, I think that that's one of the key things, certainly, that, that I'm looking at. And that's, again, that's a long term risk, right? Um, you know, we'll see uh, what comes out of the congressional hearings tomorrow. I actually take it as a very positive thing that the industry is having the opportunity to send representatives to Washington uh, and, and speak in front of Congress. And I hope that that will continue to clear up a lot of the misconceptions that I think regulators have about the space. But certainly, you know, you've been hearing, obviously, out of the SEC uh, and, and out of the Hill, uh, a lot of negative commentary on cryptocurrencies over the last several months. And so that is a key long-term risk.